Hi folks and welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use stencil layers in Unreal Engine to render your subject and background separately. This technique is super useful if you want more control in post-production, whether it's for color grading, VFX, or even compositing elements like depth, fog, or lighting tweaks, just for your character or environment. It's a simple but powerful workflow, and once you get the hang of it, it will open up a lot more flexibility in your render pipeline. So let's dive in. All right, so here we are inside the sequencer and I want to render this scene, but I want to render the robot separately from the background. Now, the first step is to make sure that the movie render queue plugin is activated. And once that's done, we'll head over to the rendering settings. And the first thing I like to do here is change the output format to EXR. The reason for this is because EXR supports high dynamic range and multiple render passes, which gives us much more flexibility in post-production. Now scroll down to the deferred rendering section and here you will see the stencil layers option. This is what allows us to isolate specific elements in our render, like the robot in this case. Now let's set that up. I'm going to add a new actor layer. Once we do that, the layers tab becomes visible in the editor. I will create a new layer and name it robot. Then I will select my robot mesh in the scene and add it to this new layer. Back in the movie render queue settings, I will now select the robot layer and add it under actor layers in the stencil section. And finally, to make sure we still render the rest of the environment in a separate pass, I will check the box that says add default layer. This setup lets us render the robot and background separately, which is great for advanced compositing and color grading in post. Now I'm going to check accumulate includes alpha. This is important because it allows the alpha channel to be accumulated over multiple samples. That means if we're doing things like motion blur or anti-aliasing, the transparency information stays accurate, which is really useful for clean compositing later on. Next, I'm going to add anti-aliasing to the render settings. And if you haven't seen my render settings video yet, make sure you don't miss it. I've broken down my preferred anti-aliasing setup in detail over there, which helps get sharper and cleaner final frames. After that, I will set the resolution and define the frame range. And I want to render, just make sure these match your final output needs. Now I'm going to add the color output pass and under that, I will check disable tone mapping curve. This is an important one. By disabling the tone mapping curve, we're keeping the raw linear color values, which gives us more control and color accuracy in post, especially when working in EXR format. Once that's all set up, we are ready to render. All right, now we're in Nuke. And the first thing that I'm gonna do is bring in my render using a read node. Then I will add two shuffle nodes, one for the background and one for the robot. And I will connect both to the read node. For the input layers, I will set one to default and the other to robot, which are the layers we set up earlier in Unreal. This is where the real power of using stencil layers shows up. Now that I have these two layers separated, I can work on them independently. For example, I can do some color correction on just the robot or the environment, make it pop a bit more and maybe apply a bit of defocus to the background to give the whole scene more depth. This kind of flexibility is what makes rendering in passes so valuable, especially when you're working in a tool like Nuke, which is incredibly powerful for compositing. Of course, I'm not a professional compositing artist, so I'm just scratching the surface here. 
but this workflow already opens up so many possibilities for creative control and post-processing. Now, of course, this whole workflow has already been covered by big artists like William Fosha and others in the industry, but I just wanted to refresh the pipeline and show how I personally approach it, especially for those who are new to compositing or Unreal's movie render queue. And that's it for this one. I hope this video gave you a clear look at how to use stencil layers and bring them into Nuke for more control in your post-processing pipeline. If you found it helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe, and drop a comment if you have any questions or want me to cover more compositing workflows in the future. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.